So OpenAI just released their own browser named ChatGPT Atlas. Some people are saying that this is the future. AI browsers are gonna change everything. This is the Chrome killer. It's the perplexity comet killer. But others are saying that this is completely useless and it's just basically AI spyware. So in this video, I'll give you an unbiased look into ChatGPT Atlas. I'll show you how to set it up. We'll go over the main features and I'll tell you whether I'm switching from Brave into this new AI powered browser. Real quick, I'm hiring a video editor. So if you wanna work with me, make sure to apply. The link is below the video. So here is the main page for Atlas. Right now it's for macOS only. The main thing is the sidebar, which I'm gonna show you. And honestly, they did take inspiration for Perplexity. A lot of the features that were months ago added to Perplexity Comet are just coming into ChatGPT. Which by the way, if you're watching my channel, you will know that this is the strategy that the big companies do. They put out their AI models out there through the API and then they wait. They wait to see what works. And once something works, once there is interest in some type of application, they pounce on it and they recreate it themselves and steal all of the revenue and customers. So this is what OpenAI is basically doing with the AI browser. Now, another thing is that it can open, manage your tabs. This is actually useful, right? And again, we're gonna get into that in a second. The agent mode is the most controversial feature, but also the feature with the most potential because it can operate the browser for you and take actions, right? There's also this uh, chat GPT highlight, like Grammarly, but more advanced, right? So we'll also look at that. Now, this is where I probably have to disagree with OpenAI that you're in control, but uh, there are several issues with this that you do need to know before choosing to switch to ChatGPT Atlas. So let's get right into it. Let's click on download for macOS. Once you have the installer downloaded, double click on it and drag ChatGPT into your applications folder. Then you can close that, then open Spotlight, type in Atlas, click on open, and here is the welcome screen. No matter what you think of AI powered browsers or OpenAI, you do have to admit the designers at this company are elite. So first thing it wants you to do is log in with ChatGPT. Okay, so once you log in, you need to still log in. Man, the internet has become so secure that you can barely get into your own accounts. 2FA, password managers, pass keys, biometrics. Now, I do have to point out this nice animation running in the background. But anyways, that doesn't matter. If the browser is shit, the design is, is you know, secondary. So boom, personal account, continue. Input data from another browser. I'm gonna select Chrome. Start import, browser memories. This sounds like a potentially cool feature, but it also sounds like George Orwell's worst nightmare. You might say, okay, David, just click on how it works. So basically what I did is I copied the whole page and now I'm gonna have Claude summarize it because uh, obviously Claude is from a different company and it's not gonna be biased towards OpenAI and ChatGPT. Key privacy controls, training data off by default. Include web browsing, controls where you're browsing, trains AI models. It's disabled unless you turn it on. Okay, that's really good. Props to OpenAI. Browser memories, let's see. ChatGPT can remember facts about your browsing to personal responses, but filters out sensitive data. Delete summaries within seven days. However, it doesn't tell you whether they train on the memories. So for the sake of this video, I am gonna turn it on. This part I think is gonna be super useful. So let's continue. And I'm not gonna be setting it as a default browser just yet. It has to earn that place, okay? This is a nice onboarding, you know, rewarding the users for using the product for long. Very, very cool. Done. And here it is, ChatGPT Atlas in the flesh, fully available. And you might be noticing, okay, David, why does it launch on ChatGPT? Well, this is actually not ChatGPT.com. This is the empty new tab page. You can see that when you open a new tab, you are automatically in like a chat-based interface, right? So whatever you want to search, it has to go through the chat-based interface. Now, this is both its biggest strength and its biggest weakness. Why is it its biggest strength? Because obviously you get the AI capabilities, right? You get the agentic search, so you can maybe say like best tech stack for startups, and it will be more intelligent than just typing that into Google, right? So as you can see, it checked a bunch of sources here, boom, it's like what, 20 different, 15 different websites, and then it gives you a conversational answer that's relevant to you. So that's obviously already better than Google. The issue is that every single thing you type in goes through chat. So let's say there are some topics that none of the big AI labs wanna touch, right? Controversial topics. Maybe you wanna ask something about what's happening in the Middle East, in a certain region of the Middle East. A lot of these AI models will either completely avoid that topic or they will give you a heavily biased answer. And you literally cannot make your way around this. As a fundamental human right, you should be able to search whatever you want on the internet, not pleased by some AI model created in San Francisco. So this is already a massive, massive issue violating personal liberties. But okay, putting the 
basic human rights aside, let's look at the AI capabilities, right? Because what have we learned about consumers? If something is convenient enough, they'll just forget about security and privacy completely. So let's look at whether this browser is useful enough. Is it convenient enough or is it just a bit too early? So let's say you want to learn about recursion. What is recursion in programming? How does it work? Show me examples. Boom. This page is the default page, aka home page, where again, you chat with ChatGPT. You can see the model on the top left, which by the way, for some reason, in a lot of these features, you cannot even see the model. So, okay, we get an answer, same as we would expect from ChatGPT. Nothing crazy, but then at the top, we have other buttons and this is the new stuff, right? So then we have search results and this is more like Google, right? It, it shows you the list of websites. It doesn't try to summarize them. It lets you select what you want to do. Do you want to go to Wikipedia? Do you want to go to Code Academy, Reddit, whatever you want to do? This is like a list, the first page, right? It's basically Google literally says it right here. <laughs> Then images, this is huge, right? Because a lot of people still went to Google, myself included. I still went to Google to search up for images. But now, if you use ChatGPT Atlas, you get it as well. Next, you get videos. Again, nothing crazy. Same as any type of search engine, whether it's Google, DuckDuckGo, all of them has a tab showing videos and then news. Again, classic browser stuff. So OpenAI just reinvented the wheel with the basic browser features. Now let me show you a more advanced capability of this browser. So I loaded up uh, Attention is All You Need, which is the revolutionary paper, but here is a nice piece of UI UX when working with ChatGPT Atlas. So it gives you a link and when you click on it, boom, it slides it open and you can still have the ChatGPT conversation on the same time, right? So it doesn't open a new tab, it just slides it to the right and you can continue seamlessly in the same conversation. This is very nice, I do have to admit. So let's go to the PDF, obviously, this is much more complex and, you know, maybe you want to have this explained. Explain this diagram. What is it showing? I mean, it's kind of written below it, so that's not really impressive thing if it gets that, but it can take a screenshot. It can understand the website. It can see what you see. And this is exactly where AI is the most OP. Upskilling yourself. I mean, I know I sound like a broken clock. I say this in like every other video, but vibe learning, using AI to improve yourself to increase your skill set, to increase your experience, to become a better programmer, to become better at whatever skill you need to do. So this is a beautiful example, right? Maybe a new hot research paper comes out. Attention, all you need is kind of old. So let's look at this one. Okay, and I'm gonna say, what is unique slash interesting about this paper? So this is a new paper from DeepSeek that came out a few days ago that basically lets you store context in pixels. Very exciting stuff. But again, it's a pretty long uh, research paper. I mean, it's not that long, 20 pages, but still, you know, 20 pages nowadays with um, all the short form content and uh, attention spans, it's a pretty long, okay? So we can speed up our learning by using ChatGPT Atlas to kind of help explain some of these more advanced concepts. So here are the key unique points about the DeepSeek OCR paper. It treats scans document not just text to OCR, compresses them visually into a small number of vision tokens that still let an LLM recover the text. It achieves very high accuracy, 97%, when the ratio of text tokens to vision tokens is less than 10x, meaning it can shrink the token count by 10x while retaining most information. This is huge, right? So already by asking like a single prompt about this paper, I understand the core idea that the people behind DeepSeek have figured out how to basically 10x token windows and context limits of any model. Okay, but this is still the assistant. The main thing that is making rounds is the agent mode, right? This is where ChatGPT Atlas can take charge, take control of your browser and do stuff for you. So here I am on YouTube and I'm gonna enable agent mode and I'm gonna tell it, load up the live stream of ChatGPT Atlas and tell me what the sentiment is in the comments, right? So pretty simple task that any human can do in a matter of 10, 20 seconds, but there it is, right? So now it's getting control. You can see that by these blue corners. It typed in ChatGPT Atlas live stream. Let's see if it figures it out that the first is a sponsored video and we can see the reasoning on the right. This is very fascinating watching the reason. It did open the live stream. Scrolling to the comments. There it is, nice. It found the comments. Now it's probably taking a screenshot and reading the comments. Again, I'm not touching the keyboard. My hands are completely off. It's doing it by itself. It's scrolling some more, looking for the sentiment that people are saying. The live stream video's comment section mainly contains sarcastic and critical remarks rather than enthusiasm. Many top comments joke that ChatGPT Atlas seems like just a Chrome plugin. So yeah, it's built on top of Chromium. So OpenAI didn't really invent any new technology here. Or that it's essentially Chrome with ChatGPT as the home tab. Several users note that CEO Sam Altman looked unprepared or even baffled during the demo. So it completed a task, took like a minute to do something that you could do in 10 seconds. And the issue is that you could do it better in 10 seconds, right? Because you would get the unfiltered thoughts that people think, like Sam Altman looks more surprised than any of us. 
this just feels like it could be a Chrome plugin. You know, you, you, you get the raw info. Well, this is like filtered down. And I think this is honestly a pretty scary thing about the future that a lot of people will get this filtered down opinion. Now, you might say like this is already what news anchors are doing, right? When the average person is watching the TV, you know, and they're like looking at what the pundits are saying and telling them what to think, it is kind of similar to this. But I think AI browsers take it to the next level where Again, the people who are not at the cutting edge of AI or people who just believe everything that the government or news tells them, I think they're going to get completely one-shotted by this. Because again, instead of getting the raw input and seeing what people feel, they'll just ask ChatGPT and ChatGPT will give them the watered down version, you know, the politically correct version that fits with the underlying bias baked into the model. And this is, again, the biggest issue is that when you use an AI browser, your entire access to the internet, your entire worldview is determined by a single large language model that has a built-in bias based on the people running the company behind it, okay? So just choose carefully is what I would say. Let's try one more thing with agent mode. So again, you can click on plus here and enable agent mode. Now you also have all the other stuff inside of ChatGPT, but notice one thing, you cannot select the AI model. There is no model selector, which is just baffling that you, inside of Assistant, you don't know if it's using ChatGPT Instant, if it's using ChatGPT Thinking, but you just, you just don't know. Like, it, that's wild. That's absolutely wild. And it's unacceptable as someone who pays $200 a month to not have control over which AI model is being used. Crazy. So let's give it a task. Open up Elon Musk's Twitter account and tell me what his last five tweets were. Let's see if Agent Mode can do this. And I'm using Google just to troll OpenAI. All right, there it is. The first time it like takes the browser, it's pretty fast, right? Uh, it doesn't delay that, so that's good. But uh, usually it's very slow in between actions. Okay, it found Elon Musk's Twitter account. It's loading. Now it needs to start scrolling. Okay, this is not the latest tweets though. I think these are like the pinned. If there is a login attempt, I'll attempt to close it and get back to the button. Okay, so it failed. It failed to open the latest tweets. Instead, it found uh, his most popular tweets or something. So this is a good demonstration of actually the slowness of agent mode and the limitations of it. A lot of the times it struggles to do basic tasks, to be honest. Even like operating Google Docs, it can't even type text. But one thing that is good is that you can write it in multiple tabs, right? So I can say, scroll some more and give me the raw text of the comments. Boom, I can launch an agent mode task in one browser tab, switch to another and do another one. Scroll some more and tell me what people think, right? So both of these are running. You can see this icon. So maybe I'm, you know, here like learning about recursion and all of these are running agent mode. This is really powerful. This is a clear indif indicator that in the future you will be managing a team of agents, right? You will be overseeing a bunch of AI agents that like, like a CEO is overseeing a company. The problem with this is that the current interface, like, you know, what is this? Like, you have to switch between browsers like that and see what your agents are doing. This is not the right interface. So my prediction is that there is going to be an AI powered browser that gives you like a dashboard, right? So you feel like a pilot in a cockpit. You can oversee what's happening, what all of your AI agents are doing. Not that you have to switch between browsers like that to see if the agent mode is stuck on something or if it has finished or what it is doing, right? The current UI of the browser is not optimal for the AI agent era. Now, one thing I do have to point out is that using browsers like Comet or Atlas comes with serious vulnerabilities and security issues. So this is a report from Brave, which is the company behind Brave Browser. And essentially they found several serious issues in Perplexity Comet, which is basically what ChatGPT Atlas is based off of, right? Like OpenAI took heavy inspiration as the Steve Jobs quote goes, good artists copy, great artists steal, right? So Sam Altman is obviously a big fan of Steve Jobs. So he took that to heart and literally just stole all the features from Perplexity Comet, but he made the UI nicer, right? So at least that's that. But anyways, here we have a report. And actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch to Atlas. I'm going to load it up here. Boom. And I'm going to ask it to summarize it. Give me a TLDR of this article. It kind of feels illegal having ChatGPT Atlas summarize the issues with browsers like ChatGPT Atlas. And really, if you want my opinion, I'm not going to be switching to an AI browser until it is security first, until it's privacy first, not AI first. Notice that this is an area where it has to be privacy first. When it comes to hardware, when it comes to the operating system, when it comes to a browser, it needs to be privacy first instead of AI first. And that's because this is really your portal to the internet. And if there is an AI in between that decides what you can and cannot see, that is a big problem for me personally and for a lot of people who are technical and who care about their privacy and security, especially when there are serious issues with AI powered browsers, right? So let's look at this report. Brave's article reports security vulnerabilities in AI powered browsers like Perplexity Comet. Key points, 
hidden or barely visible text in screenshots can inject malicious prompts into AI assistants. So basically here, you might think, okay, this is a blue background, but there might be like text that's barely visible to a human eye that the LLM can easily pick up. And that might include some harmful prompt injection instructions that will cause the agent mode to interact in ways that it shouldn't. And that is especially dangerous if you give it your login. So if you want to use ChatGPT at Atlas to kind of, you know, test it out for yourself, I would highly advise you to not give it any login. Do not save your passwords in it. Do not put your credit cards in because these models can get easily prompt injected. And especially that's especially risky in agent mode. And even visible text on normal web pages can hijack the AI behavior, right? So this website might have some instructions like go to that site. And when ChatGPT is in agent mode, it can just go there and that might like download the file or it might, you know, compromise your IP address, whatever the case is. If you're in agent mode, you are not in control, which means the AI model is in control. And by the way, we don't even know which AI model that is. Might be GPT-5 mini for all we know, which is not that smart. The article continues. These flaws let attackers exploit users logged in sessions, banking, email, etc., by making the browser act on their behalf. So the core issue is, LLMs fail to separate trusted user input from untrusted web content. Brave calls for isolating agentic browsing from normal browsing until stronger safety mechanisms exist. And I think this is the main point. Unless you're completely dumb, you do see that AI browsers are the future. 2026 will probably be the year of AI browsers. That is a pretty safe prediction to make. However, just because something is the future doesn't mean that you should adopt it right now. If you want to look at historical examples, Google Glass was like, what, 2012? And it was obviously the right thing. Augmented reality and virtual reality are the way we can see that Meta with their new glasses are implementing it. And again, that's a pretty safe prediction that five years from now, your AI glasses that are augmented reality will be more useful than your smartphone. And it is the next smartphone. But in 2012, Google, with their Google Glass product, they were simply too early. An even more extreme example, back in the 90s, I think, there was a tablet named Newton. That was basically an early version of the tablet, but until the iPad from Apple, the hardware just wasn't there. So they had the right idea, but they were 20 years early. So just because something is the future doesn't mean that it is the future right now and doesn't mean that you should switch right now. So yeah, I just want to point it out because a lot of people say AI browser is the future, but it is a lot more nuanced than that. And as this brave article points out, you should be wary of, you know, AI browsers that are not privacy first. So this is my review of the ChatGPT Atlas. Overall, it feels like a very underwhelming demo. I think OpenAI did it just to get a bunch of free data on training future models, you know, seeing how people browse the, browse the internet, uh, what they search up, what websites they use, how they navigate it for basically their own RL environment, right? Reinforcement environment that will be used to train future versions of ChatGPT. It's pretty obvious and I don't feel like it's the best OpenAI release because they're kind of stretching themselves thin. They're trying to do everything, right? Agent Kit compete with NA10. Uh, they're trying to release their own browser, compete with Perplexity. But that, the issue with that is that they cannot be great at everything. So yeah, we'll see where this goes. Obviously, this is still V1. And I do think it's still a good move for OpenAI to do it as a company. But for us, as the people who are the users, people who want to be on the cutting edge of AI, personally, this feels like an underwhelming product and still feels at least 6 to 12 months from being useful. That is my own opinion, at least. So hopefully you found this video valuable. If you did, make sure to subscribe. It's completely free. And I see you in the next one. See ya.